This is Restoration Bible Church and Ministries. We are a people of excellence living purposefully. And now, here is God's servant, Rev. Tunde Balanta, as he brings you God's Word. We trust that you will be blessed as you listen. Seven Chronicles 20, we're going to look at your praise, midnight praise. It doesn't mean waking up at midnight to praise. It's a metaphor for a challenging time in your life. Like Paul and Silas had a challenging time in their midnight season, and they praised God, and God changed it for them. So let's go to Second Chronicles 20. And they rose up, verse 20, and they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa, and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord for his mercy endure it forever. Verse 22. And when they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Monsia, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Acts 16, 25 and 26. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaking, and immediately all the doors were opened, and every man's bands were loosed. The reading of the word of the Lord is blessed. When we say midnight praise, we're using the midnight here as a metaphor or something to represent crisis situations. You know, it's darkest at midnight, and Paul and Silas were in prison, in the dungeon. Their backs were bleeding. God had sent them there supernaturally. Is it possible for God to send you somewhere supernaturally and you face challenges? A lot of people believe that if God sent them somewhere, they will never face challenges. That means Paul missed God all his life, because everywhere he went, there was trouble. It was either prison or revival. But he was in the will of God. But in the midnight season, Jehoshaphat had a midnight season where three armies gathered against him, armed to the teeth. He was outnumbered. He was outgunned. He was outpeopled. I mean, he had no power against the army. If you back up the reading a bit, you will see all that there. But for us, for me and you, children of God, people of covenant, when we come into these situations, into this challenging season, in the midnight hour, when it looks like what God promised you has not happened, it looks like you are experiencing an unexplainable delay, there are principles we must understand that will bring us victory. So midnight praise is praising God, thanksgiving when there's nothing to thank God for. Thanksgiving when it looks like God has forgotten you. These are spiritual keys and spiritual principles that will guarantee victory in every situation. Do we have an amen in the house of the Lord? Amen. Maybe in another service, I will have time to look at Jehoshaphat and what he said to God. But in summary, what he said to God before God gave them the praise cure, the praise solution, he reminded God, he said, God, number one, you and Abraham had a covenant, your friend. God, I also want to remind you that we are your people. God, I also want to remind you that you said when we call on you, you will not abandon us. He reminded God of covenant. And child of God, I want to read a scripture, or probably I'll just quote it, Hebrews 13, 20 and 21. Bear this in mind that a blood covenant understanding must be the foundation of your praise at midnight or in the midnight hour. A blood covenant understanding must be what? The foundation of your praise. Now, what do we mean by that? Hebrews 13, 20 to 21 says, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, 
that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will. Walking in you, that is which is well pleasing to him by Jesus Christ. Unto him be glory forever and ever. That is a loaded, powerful scripture. In this scripture, we are reminded that the blood of the everlasting covenant can reverse death and bring life. That the, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, God had an agreement with Jesus that I will bring you back from the dead. God had an agreement with Jesus that I will bring you back from the dead. How many of you can trust your life into the hands of your friend? Your friend says, let me pour petrol on you and let me light the match. I am holding the fire extinguisher. How many of you say, my friend, I trust you so much that when you pour the petrol and light the match, you will bring the fire extinguisher. It was such a crazy proposition. And Jesus said, I will lay down my life, but there's a blood covenant between us. You will bring me back. I want to say to you, no matter what you are going through, this covenant that is based on the blood of Jesus, God will do everything to bring you out of death to life, to bring you out of failure into prosperity, to bring you out of confusion into peace. So Jehoshaphat, Paul, they were saying we are covenant people. No matter what happens in this life, we can come out of death into life. No matter what happens in this life, everything in our life can be made perfect. I don't know how your life looks right now. It may be shaky. It may look like you are not going to make it. It may look like your enemies have ganged up because you are a covenant person. I said because you are a covenant man. I said because you are a covenant woman. They may have ganged up against you. The prison wall may be strong. The wall of Jericho may be strong against you. There may be three armies against you right now and they are all breathing down your neck. But because you are a covenant man, you are a covenant woman, you will praise God because the the God of covenant will not let you fail. Your business will not fail like the others. God will bring you out from death to life. There will be a lifting for you. I said there will be a lifting for you. The blood covenant will perfect your life. Every area that is not straight in your life, the blood covenant will perfect it. The blood covenant will do something in your heart. You will begin to desire to do the will of God. I say to you, child of God, you will not backslide like the rest of them sin will not entrap you because the blood of Jesus is able to walk in your heart so that you do that which is well pleasing to God I say your life may not look okay but when you apply that blood something will begin to happen I say something will begin to happen it will happen over your children it will happen over your family it will happen over your health there's nothing stronger than the blood of Jesus I want to announce to you today we are not going down like the rest of them there may be trouble on the right, there may be trouble on the left, but the God of covenant will never break his word concerning you. If you believe that, give me a better amen in the house of God. I said, if you believe that, give me a better amen in the house of God. I said, if you believe that, give me a better amen in the house of God. Please sit down for a bit. I know the way the devil works. The way the devil works is to bring out a file. Like the lawyer. No lawyers. They are powerful people. He brought out a file and said, Doctor, you treated this patient. Where is he now? Dead. You treated this one. Where is he now? Dead. By the time I counted like 40, the judge thought he was a butcher, not a doctor. Satan can always pick up some things you don't understand. But you have to understand that covenant is based in the blood of Jesus. That blood to fail, that means God has failed. That means God has died. Your faith will not be based on the wisdom of man. Your faith will not be based on what happened to A and what happened to B. All I can tell you that the blood of the covenant, God respected it and brought Jesus again from the dead. And because he brought Jesus again from the dead, every dead thing in your life is going to experience a resurrection. The God of heaven is going to 
will change your story. I don't care if it's December 1 or December 31st. All I know that the God of heaven, he said, I can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you ask or think. Is there a better amen in the house of the Lord today? Hallelujah. So covenant will be foundation for your praise. If it's not there, you'll just be talking. You will just be talking. Glory to God. Your praise in the midnight hour is not optional. It is the sacrifice that sets the timing of your deliverance. Your praise in the midnight hour is not optional. It is the sacrifice that sets the timing of your deliverance. Watch verse 22 of 2 Chronicles 20 again. And when, nobody say when, when they began to sing and to praise. It was not convenient. Hebrews 13, 15 says, By him therefore let us offer the sacrifices of praise, which is the fruit of our lips, giving glory to God. Psalm 8 verse 2 says, Out of the mouth of babes and suckling, as he ordained praise, that, he, that, that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. So three armies were gathered against Jehoshaphat. And the prophetic word came out of Jehazel. Such, 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 such shall it be. You will not need to fight in this battle. Okay? It didn't look true because the armies were in front of them. It may not look true for you now because some bills are not paid. Maybe they are owing you money they have not paid you. It doesn't look like your business is doing very well. It looks like one challenge after the other. But remember, the blood covenant is in Christ. For God to deny his promise, he has to deny that blood before his mercy sit. So it was not convenient. Three armies gather against you and they say you should be singing, not preparing how you are going to fire your gun. My brother and sister, this morning praise is a weapon. David had a battle in 1 Chronicles 14, 13 to 15 against the Philistines. And he told God, should I go against them? In verse 15 of 1 Chronicles 14, God, the Bible says, And it shall be, when thou shalt hear a sound of going in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then thou shalt go out to battle, for God is gone forth before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. In other words, God was telling David, don't do anything until there's a sound. On those mulberry trees. Don't do anything on the sound. God, God operates with the sound of heaven. Let there be light. There was sound before sight. Hallelujah. He said, when they began to praise, it was not convenient. But when they began to praise, the Lord said it was like a signal. When we begin to praise, heaven begins to move. Paul was in prison. They've been jailed. They've been tied all the, all the while. Their feet and hands were tied all the while. Nothing was happening for them. But when they began to praise God in that prison, what were they saying? God, whatever is happening, I know you are a covenant-keeping God. I know I'm going to come out of this trouble. I don't know how I'm coming out of this, but you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. Praise the Lord for his mercy. Endure it forever. And when they began to praise God, and when they shouted, that word, you know, that word shout, in, uh, I think it's Joshua 6.20, it they, they shouted with a great shout, and the wall of Jericho came down. It's a battle cry. When you begin to shout, and you begin to praise God, when things are looking tight, you move the hands of God. Because the Bible says God indwells the praises of his people. Everybody can whine. Listen, if you want to complain, you are going to have more than enough reasons to complain. My principal in secondary school used to tell us as children, say some people were born crying. They live complaining and they die disappointed. Listen to me, I'm not going to die disappointed. I'm not going to live complaining. I'm not going to be crying. David said, David, David said, I'm not, he said, we having the same spirit of faith. 
Because we believe, therefore we speak, therefore we praise. Things may not be looking okay, but if you will give God the praise that is due His name, because you understand He's a covenant-keeping God, I want to say to you this morning, heaven will move in your behalf. I don't care what your neighbor thinks. I don't care if people think you're a little bit crazy. I don't care if people think, well, with all what's going on in this guy's life, and I know this about them, I know this about them, you are a sign and a wonder to them, because when they look at you, you are still praising God. God. When they look at you, you are still praising God. They threw the three Hebrew children into the fire. But the Bible says they were loose. They were walking free in the fire. I don't know where the enemy has thrown you. If the enemy may tie your hand and tie your feet, but it didn't close your mouth. I said it didn't close your mouth. The Bible says let everything that has bread praise the Lord. If your problem is bigger than God, then you don't have a solution. But I don't know what that problem is. It's not bigger than Jehovah. Over. And because that mountain is not bigger than Jehovah, I'm giving the Lord a shout of praise in this house this morning. I said I'm giving the Lord a shout of praise in this house this morning. I said I'm giving the Lord a shout of praise in this house this morning. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I said hallelujah! I said hallelujah, give him a shout, somebody. The devil thinks you are stupid, some of your friends think you are stupid, but when your miracle happens, you are going to be dancing and rejoicing in your house. Let's give the Lord a praise break in this church right now. Stand to your feet, lift your hands, and give him a praise break in the house of God. Give him a praise break in the house of God. Hey! Eleka celebro bobo sete. Give him a shout. Father, we praise you. Father, we praise you. Father, we praise you. Father, we praise you. Hallelujah! 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 Glory to God. Let me tell you something. You are not smarter than Paul. You are not smarter than Jehoshaphat. You are not smarter than Joshua. All these people use the weapon of praise. The battle cry of praise. So you need to get to your shop to, on Monday morning. Lock the door and begin to praise God because money is coming before December. Begin to praise God because that business must prosper. Begin to praise God because it is well with your children. Begin to praise God because it is well with your family. The devil will say, but you have many problems. He say, but I have a covenant keeping God. They told Balaam, they say, go and cause the children of Israel. He spoke many things, but I love one verse. He said, he said, but the shout of a king is among them. What is the shout of a king? When a king comes into a place, people start shouting and hailing him. When a, when a king comes in, he, every other name must fade away but the name of Jesus. When, when, when a king comes in, people, it's a battle cry. It, that word shout is also in Joshua 6.20. When they shouted, the wall of Jericho came in, came down. Every time the Ark of the Covenant came among God's people, there was a shout of the presence of God. May I say to you this morning, that sickness we bow to the shout of the presence of God. That infirmity we bow to the shout of the presence of God. Glory to God. Let's take a few more thoughts this morning. Glory to God. Hey, hey. Sometimes when I'm praying, you think I'm crazy. But when the result comes, you know, when we're trying to buy these properties here, 
They looked impossible. There were many times I was running up and down in my prayer closet, running like a small boy. I said, my father is bigger than that need. My father is bigger than that obstacle. Was I stupid? Yes, in the eyes of man, I was stupid. In the eyes of heaven, God said, that's my boy. That's my boy. You know, children will say, my father will beat your father. But their fathers have never fought. So I'll tell that problem, my heavenly father will beat you. So I'm dancing for him. My heavenly father will provide. So I'm dancing. There are principles in the word of God that must be employed. And whosoever employs them will get the victory. Sometimes I just shout. Sometimes I say, why are you shouting? I say, I'm shouting and laughing because you are failing. And one sister starts talking, says, hey, God, do oh. Just try to laugh. Laugh in faith. Ha, 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 ha. So I say, why are you laughing? I say, I'm laughing at you. Ha, 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 ha. Where are you going to get the money? Ha, 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 ha. I have a covenant keeping God. Ha, 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 ha. What about that other problem? Ha, ha, ha. After I said that, this one, not mad. It will leave you alone. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory to God. But there must be a covenant understanding, a covenant backup. Glory to God. All right. Praising God for his mercy is a testimony of his goodness in the midst of your test. Somebody say, with me, praising God for his mercy is a testimony of his goodness in the midst of your test. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What were they singing? They were praising the Lord for what? His mercy endured for. We don't know what Paul sang. Maybe he was singing the same thing, but at least in Chronicles, the Bible says they were praising the Lord for his what? Mercy endured forever. When you praise God, that's 2 Chronicles 20, 21. Psalm 145, 8 and 9 says, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all. What is the tender mercy of God? The word mercy and compassion mean to love tenderly, to be full of eager yearning, to suffer with, to love tenderly, to be full of eager yearning, to suffer with. When I'm praising God for his mercy, I'm saying, God, this problem might be here, but I know you love me so much. I know you are, you are eager to help me. I know you are eager to bless me. I know you are eager to deliver me. He said, I will contend with those that contend with you, and I will save your children. I know you are bringing everybody in my family out of every trouble. You are singing of the mercy of God, and it's the mercy of God you are going to see. Is there an amen in the house of the Lord? Yeah. 2 Corinthians 1.3 says that God is the Father of mercies. 2 Corinthians 1.3, God is the Father of mercies. 2 Chronicles 16.9 says, The eyes of the Lord, they run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of those whose hearts are upright towards him. He's the Father of mercies. His eyes are running to and fro. So when things are difficult, the year is ending, some of your dreams have not been realized, the devil will try to tell you, does God really care about you? Look at that other neighbor. By the time you talk to that other neighbor, you may discover that he too has some areas that has not fully manifested yet. The devil will tell you, you are the only one. No, no you are not the only one. He's telling everybody the same lie. He's lying the same lie to everybody. So I will praise God irrespective of how I feel, irrespective of what I see, because I know his mercy, his eagerness, his willingness, his longing, endure it forever. Do you know what, what, what eagerness means? You have not gone home for Christmas for the last 10 years. And you tell your people you are coming. I can tell you that your mother, if she's still alive, she will stand outside. She will stand outside. I, I went to see my mom uh, sometime a few days ago. She's old now. She's 90-something plus. Yeah, 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 yeah. So one of my sisters called her. She said, no wonder your voice is very strong. Is because pastor has arrived to see you. Because the reverend has arrived to see you. Do you know God feels that way about you? Every time you praise God, say, I've been waiting for you. What I've been waiting that you will praise me for the things I've done in your life. I've been waiting that you will praise me for the oxygen you have been, you have been using free of charge. You know God doesn't charge for oxygen. 
Some people, if they can charge oxygen and tax it, they will tax you for the oxygen. God said, I've been giving you for free. I gave you eternal life. I've been waiting. Oh my God, I wish somebody would get a revelation. I pray somebody will get a revelation. You haven't gone home and they see you. Everybody's excited. They want to give you everything they, they have in that house. Why? Because there's compassion and mercy. They're just eager to see you. When you praise God, you, you praise God for his mercy. You are acknowledging him for who he is. You will marry, oh. You will have children, oh. You will build houses, oh. You will graduate, oh. All is in the blueprint of God. But as long as your mouth is not taped, you need to lift that hand and say, when you praise with understanding, you, you, you specifically look at the problem area and say, God, I'm praising you for victory here because I know you're a merciful God. And I tell you, heaven will begin to move. When they began to praise, the Lord sent ambushments against their enemies. So our praise should be a testimony of his mercy. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Your praise, your midnight praise, brings confusion to the camp of the enemy and delivers you from your trouble. Your midnight praise brings confusion to the camp of the enemy. The Bible says Abraham was strong in faith, giving glory to God. You know, sometimes your praise can just be when thoughts are bombarding you, you say, Father, I give you glory because your healing power is working in my body. Father, I give you glory because the financial needs are met. Father, I give you glory because the doors are open. You just, you know, Abraham, there was no way. You see, praise is a sacrifice. It's not convenient. There was no way Abraham was going to have a child at that age. His own body was dead. Sarah's body had been dead a long time ago. But he kept praising God. He kept praising God. Irrespective of the medical report, he kept praising the Lord. He kept saying, praise God. Hallelujah. It's done. It's done. Go with me to 2 Chronicles 20, 22. Let me read it from the easy translation. From the easy translation it reads. From verse 22, 2 Chronicles 20. As the musicians began to sing, the Lord suddenly made the soldiers of Judah's enemies confused. The soldiers from Ammon and Moab started to attack the soldiers from Edom. They destroyed Edom's army. And when they had done that, they started to fight against each other. So they all destroyed one another. Judah's soldiers came to a tower from where they could see the desert. They looked at the large army of their enemies, but they could not see any soldier who was still alive. I said they could not see any soldier who was still alive. They only saw dead bodies that were lying on the ground. They didn't fire one arrow. They didn't fire one bullet. The other people were armed to the teeth. They didn't do nothing. But when they began to praise, the Lord set confusion among them. You can imagine three armies. We don't know what they quarreled about. Maybe it was just somebody said, this carpet is red. Somebody said, no, it's blue. And then over red and blue, they killed themselves. And then the other people, they finished themselves. Over red. Just something. God has many ways of solving your problem if you will acknowledge his mercy upon your life. God has a thousand and one ways of, to make sure that money comes into your hand if you acknowledge his mercy. Uh, the cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. He put them here. He knows where they are. Money is the least of God's problem. Do you know if you remove money from our knees, most people will not have a prayer point. <laughs> if they remove money now and say, money is not a problem. People, some people will not pray again. That's why some people are abroad where the interest rate is 1%. They can just go and borrow anything. Everything, borrow, borrow, everything, borrow, borrow. But you will pay back. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Lord is full of compassion this morning. When they began to praise him, what you are going to do this morning as I conclude this service is you are going to locate the enemies, not the person sitting next to you. That's your friend, that's your brother. The enemies of poverty, the enemies of failure, the enemies of sickness, 
The enemy is that you are too small to do that project. You say I'm too small, then I will tell you that my God is bigger than that project. Every enemy you may be facing right now, enemy of delay, these are the kind of enemies I'm talking about. We are going to highlight them. As an enemy of this, I highlight you, I see you. But in the next few minutes, I'm going to sing of the Lord's mercy. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. Yeah! With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all. So now is the time to stand to your feet. Everybody stand to your feet. for people anyhow as the spirit leads as the spirit leads identify one or two of them if it's a shout you want to give to God you give him a shout if it is a if it is a laughter you want to give to God I don't know what you want to do but praise is an act if you want to run you run if you want to sit you sit if you want to shout you shout but don't do it carelessly think about that take the next one two minutes think about that mountain in your front is it, it may be school fees, it may be admission, it may be delay. Think about it right now. I say, Father, for A, B, C, D, I'm going to praise you. For A, B, C, D, quickly. Say with me, Father, in the name of Jesus, for these challenges, I will praise you for your mercy. For the following challenges, I'm praising you for your mercies. Now list them before the Lord. List them before the Lord. Now let's give him a praise. Let's give him a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. We give you a shout of praise. Yeah! We give you a shout of praise. I give you a shout of praise. Yeah! I give you a shout of praise. Yeah! I give you a shout of praise. 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 Father, in Jesus' name, we lift our hands in thanksgiving this morning. Thank you for jobs and better jobs. Thank you for jobs and better jobs. Thank you for business expansion. Thank you that delayed payments will be made this week. In the name of Jesus. 
Lord, every door closed against your people. Doors of marriages are open. Doors of supernatural childbirth are open. Projects shall be completed. Favor going out and coming in. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. And when they began to shout, the Lord sent ambushment. Give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a shout. In Jesus' name. for listening to today's message do join us same time next week follow us on our social media handles facebook and instagram at restoration ministries international twitter and mixilar at rbcm online and our website is www.rbcmonline.org you can also be part of our live power park services every wednesday by 5 30 p.m and on Sunday by 7 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. respectively at Restoration International Conference Center, RICC, Romanew Extension, Kaduna South. God bless you.